I thought we were all going to Nando's to celebrate results. That's like the only reason that I'm here. Oh my God, I totally forgot. Me and I were gonna go to the park. I kind of have to stop mm -hmm. packing. When did we discuss Nando's? I do like that choice that the actor made, Isaac. That he's always talking through his teeth. Like he's always holding back a little bit. Hey, all you spoiled teenagers who are going to take a three week vacation? You suck! JK Calloway here, jumping back into Heartstopper. I joke, Nick is the shit. But episode two, season three, this one's called Home, which uh, a lot of context with that, because I mean, we've got the the Darcy and Tara thing going on. How's Charlie feeling his own home? But the big thing that happened last episode was Charlie and Nick said, I love you for the first time. Which, I mean, nerve wracking as shit. Think back to when you were in, whenever you said it for the first time. Nerve wracking, absolutely insane. Uh, but they do, and that's awesome. And you know, it's young love. And are, are Nick and Charlie gonna get married? Probably not. Ellen Tao, probably not. Darcy, Darcy and Tara, no. But like looking back. I mean, so informative and important, like my, the bigger relationship I had, like a couple of them, a few, few, few of the bigger relationship, super important to my memories. And it, it's super, it's super funny because now I'm 44 years old now. I look back and only think of the good things. <laughs> There's reasons you broke up with these people. I can't think of a single one why. Unless I think about it for two seconds, then I'm like, oh yeah, bitch. <laughs> but you know, we're all kids, man. Like, you, you, you figure things out. I'm sure I was a giant prick, you know, uh, to a number of people I've dated in the past. But I'm sure I'm a giant prick to my current you know, my wife. <laughs> I'm sure she, there's moments where she's like, oh, frying pan. <laughs> you know, but, you know, you, you figure things out. You figure out how to be a decent person. You figure out how to be more empathetic, not so much so, so selfish and all these things, but right now it seems like, other than I guess Darcy and Tara, who've been together for quite a while, you know, the other two couples that we've seen are still in the honeymoon phase, essentially. You know, they're still, you know, new and exciting and everything's, you know, first time for everything kind of thing. So, uh, it's going to be positive for a while. I don't know if, how long this show is going to go or how long this season is going to last as far as, you know, is it going to be the entire school year or what, but things happen, things change, things, people grow, people change, so right now, everything's pretty great. We'll see where it goes. Make sure you do hit like and subscribe if you enjoy the channel. Appreciate you. We'll be doing the first four this week episodes of season three and then the last four next week so keep an eye out and I'll turn on notifications if you wish to and also if you want to see the full reactions uncut picture in picture they're over at patreon patreon.com forward slash jk reacts we do every show here on youtube we do on patreon with full reactions and every episode we do here on youtube that we chop up we give a shout out to one of our patrons this episode i'm gonna butcher the crap out of this but we're gonna shout out Belizeo McManus. There's no way that's how you say that. <laughs> Belijo? Bihijo? There's options. We call you Bill. Thanks, Bill. I apologize for not getting that right. I guarantee I didn't. There's no way. But thank you for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. And if you want to hear your name shouted out, head over to Patreon, sign up, check everything out. There's a lot. All of Heartstopper, obviously, but so many more shows. Uh, the, the one that seems like a lot of people watch as far as the analytics go, both on, you know, on YouTube and on Patreon especially, is Pose. I watched all of Pose last year. 
that was like my favorite show at the time. And then I think Heartstopper started around the time I finished Pose. Or maybe they intertwined. I don't know. But oh, I miss Pose. It was great. But current favorite show right now, Heartstopper. Give me more. Home. Hopefully it stays positive for a while. <laughs> There's this looming, you know, Charlie's issues that he's not ready to tackle yet. But, like, Nick seems like he might be pushing it. Like, he brought it up. Charlie's not ready. Yeah, it's one of those things you have to give it time. He has to be ready. And more frighteningly, something has to make him ready. Which means something's going to happen medically. That's going to suck. It's coming, though. But let's find out. Here we go. This is my favorite nephew. Don't tell David. Hey, Auntie. Oh. Auntie? Okay. Uncle Rich. Oh, yeah. Oh. Olivia Coleman couldn't come. Yeah. Maybe in that house. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> Stop. You can't force the issue, my guy. Yeah, you can't do it. Did you do it? Do what? You know what? <laughs> and he said it back. Yeah. Told you. Shut up. He said that he was worried that. I... <laughs> Come on, baby. Hey. Charlie, I don't see any tidy. Oh, hang on. Nick, I... Don't okay, talk to me like that. Put the phone down. You can talk to Nick later. Charlie, yeah? You shouldn't be staying late around his house. You're too young to be having sex. What? We're not. Charlie, I'm not stupid. I'm worried that you're putting a boy over everything else, over yourself. So I can't have a boyfriend because of schoolwork? No, that's not what I said. Mum, you're literally making a problem out of nothing. I'm only saying this because I'm worried about him. Charlie, can we... You've been a teenager. Can you please not undermine me like that in front of him? You were being too harsh. I always said the wrong thing to him. It's true. She only said one thing. I can see both sides. <laughs> we really need to meet Charlie. I'm dying to know what he's like. You have to bring him around for Christmas because he needs family approval. <laughs> I thought we were all going to Nando's to celebrate results. That's like the only reason that I'm here. Oh my God, I totally forgot. Me and I were gonna go to the park. I kind of have to stop packing. When did we discuss Nando's? I do like that choice that the actor made Isaac. That he's always talking through his teeth. Like he's always holding back a little bit. I am diagnosing you with a severe case of smitten <laughs> and growing symptoms of head over heels. Uh, well, I don't think that's a real thing, unfortunately. Well, I am a qualified psychiatrist, so actually I made the rules. Do you ever treat people with eating disorders? Sometimes. It's not my speciality, but it tends to go hand in hand with other things. Mm-hmm. Be honest. This is the opportunity, actually. No, go on, me. No, 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 no. You need a nice poster of a handsome boy up there. I'm a lesbian, Bram. Your dad never told me that. You need a pretty girl up there, then. Your mum called again, by the way. Oh, no need to do anything about it. Just thought you ought to know. Do either of you want this skirt? It's been ages since I wore a skirt outside of school. I'll take that. What's up? I'm worried. I don't know. I love you. What's going on, Charlie? What? Well, you don't want to hang out with us anymore. Like, you stop replying to texts. I'm just sorry. It's fine, Charlie. It's, it's not the end of the world. I just wanted to make sure that you're okay. I'm okay. Just don't feel like doing anything. You promise that's it? Yeah. Do you want to know? Mm. 
to be fair, that's outstanding that he's looking himself. Don't. Why would you do that? Hold, like, you can't put that on someone who is literally not in town and who already. Mm. Are you not feeling very well? No, I'm eating very much. Don't tell me. Is it the seasoning? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use the bathroom. Okay. You okay, Nick? Yeah, I'm just going to... i just got to go and talk to Charlie. I'll, I'll catch you guys up there. I missed you so much. I missed you too. Like, I, I'm, I know we haven't really talked about it much. Shit. And it's He's okay gonna... if you don't want to talk about it right now. I just... Charlie, are you still there? Mm-hmm. I think you were right. I think I do have an eating disorder. Sorry. Charlie. It's okay. You can talk to your parents. You can you can get help. I can't talk to them. I can't tell my parents. Of course. My mum is not like you. She doesn't listen to me. She gets angry at me. Are you in here texting Nick? We're having a family dinner. I wasn't feeling very well. Okay. Well, what's wrong? Don't know. Come on, come downstairs. I'll get you some paracetamol. Charlie. I have to go. God, I hope, I hope, I hope my kids know they can tell me anything. I try to make that clear. I, I, I hope. What's going on? You've had something on your mind this whole holiday. Charlie has an eating disorder. Oh. You knew that. Right, um. You can put that together. Uh, are you sure? He just can't eat sometimes. A lot of the time, which makes him really anxious. Been getting really bad recently. I, I really love him, and I'm scared. Oh, come here! You're a sixteen-year-old kid. Right. That is a lot to put on the shoulders of a sixteen-year-old. I don't know what to do. I, I don't know how to fix him. That's the thing. Maybe you can't. I have to. I'm, I'm his boyfriend. I know, and I know that you love him so, so much. But that dependency isn't healthy for anyone. Yeah. Charlie needs someone who isn't his 16-year-old boyfriend. Love can't cure a mental illness. Right. So I just can't do anything. You no, can I just didn't say be that. there. How then? You can be there for him. Mm -hmm. Just to talk or listen. Oh, oh, that's big. That's big. That's love, darling. I appreciate the fact that they created a character that says the right thing there. It's a bit of a cop out. <laughs> it's a bit of a cop out that his aunt happens to be a psychologist, right? But it's what fucking Nick needs here for sure. And the the like Charlie's looking in, into it himself, which is huge. Trying to do something about it is such a big step. I've known a number of people who have had an eating disorder, and actually an ex-girlfriend who I cared about a lot. We actually just had a summer together, and then she went off to college. But her name was Jess, and she was awesome. But she had an eating disorder as well. And all, you know, I didn't, like, I, I knew enough about it um, to know that I, you know, I personally couldn't fix it. All I could do is just offer my support and we could talk about it. Talk, like, right, we tried to, I remember we had a long, long conversation about where do you think it started? You know, like, how, how do you think it manifested? And she genuinely had no clue. And 
you know, it's it's something that's usually there forever. Like it's one of those things. I don't know. I I, I won't. I won't. I can't possibly say you're born with it. But it's one of those societal things that's just kind of you know step by step by step grows and grows and grows. I hope she's well now. Like I haven't talked to her since I was nineteen. Yeah, I was nineteen. I hope she's well. <laughs> you know, like you know, when when we when we when she went to college, we kind of agreed to, you know, we, we you know stop dating. Obviously, I, I visited her. I visited her once at her college, like a month later. And she already had a new boyfriend and everything, and she was doing fine. And we just, yeah, we never talked again. Um, I hope she's well, you know, especially with that, because I know, you know, it was a, it was a big thing, you know, she did purge, uh, once, uh, at my house, like, she, she, you know, had dinner, and she's like, I, I need, I, like, I, I know, I, it, I know it's not healthy, but I need to, yeah, and, yeah, it, it was, it was an experience for sure that it's rough. I don't know if Charlie's purging. I don't know if he's eating enough to purge, honestly. Um, but anorexia's enough, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be worse than that. It's, you know, it's quite scary. And thankfully, they did write a character <laughs> that could explain to Nick that it's, you know, it's not all on his shoulders. Charlie needs to be ready. You know, which is a big thing. He does need to be ready himself to make changes. And it's... God, it's gotta be hard. Thankfully, you know, my, my mental issues have nothing to do with my uh, physical health, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't know. It, it's hard to say. Like, I, I have shades of OCD and ADHD and like you know a lot of people do um I'm not medicating nor do I think you know I, I like well I, who fucking knows but as far as I can tell it hasn't affected my life too much <laughs> I'm just you know I reorganize a lot <laughs> it's got, got my thing but man that's rough and not like I mean there's plenty of other things that happened in that episode but that's not Darcy blocking her mom that's huge that's a scary scary thing because that's you know it's not closing the door but it's certainly you know that's that's a scary step but at the same time we've seen their relationship and how it warrants that move like you know again People should have to apply to have children. I'm just like... Ugh. Some parents, man. Thank you guys for watching. Comments. Let me know just out of that one. The thing, like, and that, that's the other thing about... Charlie. And, like, his parents seem like they would be there. They would, they would... Not judge him. Like, the mom is teetering. You know, like, mom thinks she knows best kind of thing. And is discounting Charlie's outbursts and all this shit. Those, you know, like, she's got to get that under control. But also, it seems like... I don't know why, but some parents just seem like they forget what the fuck it was like to be a kid. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's well depicted, you know, in, in this show. But in reality, like, think of some of the parents you know. And they expect their kids to just know shit. I'm guilty of that. I guarantee I'm guilty of that. With my kids. And it's like, well, they, they don't know yet. Like, I, I didn't know shit when I was a kid. Like, I was just talking to my... To, I don't know if it was to my mom or other family members, but, like, we just went to a funeral in the family, and it reminded me of when I was 10. My mom's mom died. My grandma. And I remember I didn't understand. I didn't understand the concept of... What do you mean she's gone for, uh, like, I, I, I'm never going to see her again. It, it, I couldn't wrap my head around it. It's just one of those things I didn't understand, I didn't know, I hadn't been through. So I remember at my grandma's funeral, I threw a fit. 
because, like, you know, I, I just like take me back to the hotel. I want to. I want to go back to the hotel. I don't want to be here anymore. You know, I threw a fit like I just sitting there like, oh my god, I'm so bored. That kind of thing. Like, and any any excuse to just not be in that room because I didn't get it at, at the time. You know, and I feel horrible. I feel fucking horrible that I kind of like upstaged or tried to be the center of attention at my grandma's funeral because I just didn't understand the concept that she was dead. I just, yeah. But it's one of those things. Kids don't get everything because they haven't been through things. And, you know, it seems like a lot of parents don't remember that. Like, Charlie's mom knows what's going on. And maybe she's afraid to face it. I don't know. It's complicated as shit, obviously. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. Episode 3 coming up tomorrow. And hopefully, you know, some more understanding takes place. We'll see. We'll talk to you then.